Good evening and welcome to the Bond 2020 community meeting and listening session regarding the replacement campus for the DeGolia Elementary School. Um, we're here in a hybrid format, which means that we're here live at DeGolia Elementary. We're also broadcasting via Zoom and on Facebook Live. If you're on Facebook Live, please feel free to make your comments in the comment section. We'll get those shared and read. If you're joining us on the Zoom meeting, please feel free to make your comments and ask any questions, make suggestions or, um, or concerns in the chat room. And uh, or you can go off mute, raise your hands, use the reaction button to the lower right hand side, go off mute and we'll um, actually have you speak live. So with that being said, I'm going to pause now for our interpreter to be able to give instructions in Spanish, how to join us to participate in Spanish. Go ahead, Alejandra. Okay, what we're doing right now, if you could please check your, if you're in the Zoom meeting, please be sure to check the chat, check the chat room for instructions on how to participate. We're so happy to have you join us here. And again, we're in the hybrid format. So what you're seeing is actually us live in the camp, on the campus of DeGoya Elementary School. Um, and we're so pleased because this campus is very lucky to have a very dynamic and excited principal who has been leading the charge here and working with our community to make sure they're getting their voices heard um, regarding this new campus. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and um, if you'll go ahead, principal, and make your greetings. Thank you for taking time out Today has been a journey from the beginning of the year, and now as we move towards our progression, I'm super excited to see the new ideas for our new school. Without further ado, let's <laughs> well, very quickly, thanks everybody for joining us either here live or on the Zoom. Everybody who's in the business with us. Um, it's very exciting to see the next stage of this project. Who am I supposed to turn it to next? Because that's who they really want to. Okay, so our chief of construction. construction. Yes, yeah, so Dalbert. Thank you, you Justin Flores. And thank you, Dalbert community. Uh, those hybrid, I mean, those virtually, and those here live. Uh, we're excited. This is this has been a journey for our team, uh, updating you guys and keeping you uh, updated on our design. Keiko has done a wonderful job. You know, we started with those three big ideas, that, and we've kept that theme throughout. Uh, at this point in the presentation, uh, where in our last meeting, uh, you were looking at two different options, and in this one, you're going to see how they kind of took that information and kind of combined that information into the solution you're going to see tonight. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Roberto with uh, Keiko Architecture. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, we're excited to present the, the results of our work and the community meetings that we did earlier this uh, past year and, and earlier this year. Um, so without much further ado, we'd like to start with the presentation. Uh, looking at a recap, uh, of the big idea that we talked about in the first community meetings, having that modern design, modern style, kind of reminiscent to the mid-century modern that the existing school is right now. Uh, additionally, uh, looking at collaborative spaces and how to maximize those in the new campus, making sure that the, there, there's opportunities for students to interact and in, uh, have uh, spaces other than just the classrooms. Uh, where they can have interactions with, them, with teachers. Uh, these are some of the images that we presented previously uh, that were actually selected by the community as uh, kind of inspiration images of uh, the design that they like to see in the new school. Uh, as you may recall, the original massing concept of the school, uh, having an education wing and a more public wing that has a cafeteria and gymatorium on that side. Uh, looking at the resultant design, um, in some of our discussions, it was uh, expressed that we wanted to keep the flare address to the school 
So we've directed the entrance and the carpool lanes towards Flair uh, Drive so that we can keep that same address. And you can see kind of with the arrows and the carpool lanes, uh, how you access the site. You actually have a pretty generous kind of drive going up to the front of the school that is, uh, actually has an entrance to a small courtyard there. The star that you see on the site plan actually signifies the main entrance of the school. Uh, to the north of that, there's playgrounds for both uh, younger kids and older kids. Uh, so there's two sets of playgrounds in, in one area. You've got basketball courts and as well as a big uh, grass play field uh, for the children. Uh, a couple of things that we were uh, wanted to make sure that we kept for the school, looking at the plans and the amount of effort that went into building the community gardens that you guys have here, we felt it important to, if possible, keep it. And looking at the development of the site plan and where it was located on the site, uh, we're excited to say that we're able to keep the community garden as it exists today, the intent is to demolish the building around it and keep that community garden where it is right now, which now instead of being kind of in the middle of the school, it's going to be up front in the front yard. And then to the rest of that, or the right, you see the courtyard entry that we've created for the new school. So as you walk in from the carpool, you're kind of going down this kind of wooded area or kind of some landscaping and you're surrounded on all sides by glass kind of looking up to this board. Uh, you see a 3D visual of the school right now and we've taken our cues, not only from the community meetings, from the existing design of the school, looking at that butterfly uh, roof that you have right now in the auditorium and administration area of the existing school and implementing that in the new education wing, as well as creating a new whole uh, cafeteria and gymatorium space uh, for the school. You can see on the floor plans right here, uh, main entrance kind of at the end of that uh, court here that we talked about that's directly adjacent to administration. And as you go down the hallways, you have pre-K spaces, kindergarten spaces, first grade on the first floor, kind of towards the back of the, of the, I guess, east side of the school. You have the special ed classrooms that will have direct access uh, to the bus drop-off lane right there. And as you're coming back and get closer to the cafeteria, you have your arts room, you have your music room, and as well for this school in particular, we were able to incorporate an orchestra room for a dedicated uh, orchestra teaching because we know that's an important uh, part of the curriculum here at the school. Uh, as you walk through that little courtyard connector piece, you walk into the cafeteria, and then kind of down the hallway, you'll enter the gymatorium, uh, which is actually serves also as the storm shelter for the facility. On the second floor, as you go up the stairs, uh, as you go up the learning stair to the right, you'll have the media center. And then you go down the hallways with the second, third and fourth, fourth and fifth grades uh, kind of flanking either side of the, of the space. Now you're seeing the concept renderings for the school. This is a view from Flair Drive as you see that kind of long processional walk that actually goes to where the existing school is and past it. In the, off to the left on that image would be the existing uh, community garden space uh, that we showed earlier. A little closer look angle kind of from the community center, uh, community garden space looking towards the front entrance. Uh, to the left, you're seeing the gymnasium, gymatorium space uh, with the accent color panels. Uh, that highlight the school colors and as well have a little bit of accent to make everything kind of pop and a little bit more exciting. And then you see in the background the, the bricks double uh, on the second story, the brick space that is the media center, and then the classroom wing as you as you go further away from the renter. A little closer view of the media center with the administration down below. Uh, to the right, you're seeing the gymnasium, uh, gymatorium space, and then you're seeing the, the classroom wing and then this is a look from the east, uh, looking west at the classroom wings. Uh, and in the background, you're seeing the gymnasium spaces all, all along kind of the front of the school where you have that carpool drop-off lanes. 
This is a view of the conceptual uh, cafeteria space, a lot of glass open to the playgrounds and you're seeing the courtyard. We also have uh, undulating acoustical ceiling treatment uh, with the playful lights, uh, kind of reminiscent, almost like if you're underwater since we're dolphins. Uh, so that's the idea. You have kind of this kind of wave looking deal with, with the buoys kind of floating around in the cafeteria. And then a view of the learning stair uh, right next to administration. Uh, we're using a lot of the school colors, but also giving it a little bit of pop of color, make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, a great gathering area there at the front of the school. And lastly, this is a view of the interior of the uh, gymatorium with the uh, acoustical colored panels, kind of bringing the outdoors into the space. Uh, on the back, you see the, the stage space. And then actually that's not shown on the rendering, but that'll, that'll be clad in kind of in brick, mimicking what's going on the outside to give that wall kind of a little bit more interest that you're not seeing there. Uh, but this is the, in general, the gymnasium, the auditorium, and as well the storm shelter space. And that is it for, for an overview of the presentation, pretty quick, but we're really excited about how this is turning out. Okay, I'm excited. Beautiful job, uh, Keiko, with your design. Uh, next, I want to talk to you guys about the timeline, right? Uh, right now, we're in, right now, we're in a little past 50% design, meaning the architects are going to be taking us to the city very quickly, and we want to bid it over the summer uh, so we can basically start toward the early part of next year. I mean, there's a long six month duration. We build in for our permits and we can get it quicker. We even uh, better our condition. But with all that said, that will give us a 2024 fall opening for your new school. Again, the students will stay here and you've got plenty of land. So there won't be any shift in the campus. Like I said, we, they're going to build it in the back in, the play, uh, in your play fields. And once that's completed, you guys occupy that building, you know, uh, they'll demo this building and turn it into that long procession. So, so with that, do we have any questions from the audience here or online? Yes, we do have a comment from online. Um, I love that we can't have the full auditorium. The gym auditorium is a better with, with the mixing with the cafeteria. Will it be set with sound and I, AV needs for productions? Yes, the space will be equipped with the AV needs for productions. Uh, as well as a uh, lighting package uh, for, for uh, any school productions. And again, I just want to let everyone know, we have some people join us late on the call. We are doing this as a hybrid meeting, so we're actually broadcasting live from the Goya Elementary School Auditorium. So if you're joining us on uh, Facebook or on Zoom, please feel free to ask any questions and we'll get them shared. Is the state of the flood flow across the country? I believe that it's roughly 25 feet, if not a little bit. Can you, know, repeat, can you repeat the question? Yeah, sorry. The question was how deep the stage is. Um, and if I, if I remember correctly, I believe it's 25 feet. Uh, we did have some meetings with the BISD. The, uh, theater department to make sure that the size of the stage was appropriate. So we did adjust the plans to make sure that we were meeting that dimension. Uh, I believe it's 25, but don't quote me on that. When the orchestra, <laughs> when the orchestra is playing. Yeah, we'll, we'll look it up and we'll let the principal know what that dimension is so we can uh, send that information to them. From Facebook, we have a comment. This is so exciting and thank you. And also we have another question from Zoom. Is there any reason that we can have larger windows in the classrooms like we have now? Is there a regulation about that or, or anything? No, there's really no regulation. There, there is a good bit amount of windows in each classroom. Uh, I have to go back and look. I don't know how many, you know, how many windows there are here. 
it's always a fine balance with the amount of windows that you put in classrooms and trying to make sure that you're complying with energy codes. Uh, so uh, it, it's something that we strive to strike a balance with. So in the gym, will the, uh, I guess the basketball goals swing up? Yes, they'll be retractable. Uh, the two main- uh, Can you show that image again? Sure. Yeah. Sorry, and let me repeat the question. I don't know if everybody heard. The question was whether it, within the gym, the basketball goals will be retractable. And the answer is yes, they will be retractable uh, basketball uh, goals. So when you're having a production, all those goals will be raised up uh, so that they don't interfere at all. Well, one thing that would be nice that we don't have now on those basketball goals is an adjustable height for all 10 feet, which is, of course, standard. but at this age level, just about every team plays on a nine foot rim. So it's hard to have a, a good practice there because then they go to the wide play and it's, it's not in there. Um, so I don't know if that's side consideration, but goals at the, at the wide do that. They swing up and they go up and down to different lines. Yeah, we'll take a look, make sure that that's part of the, the specification for the goals that they have the ability to go up and down. And also, Just volleyball, I don't know if there's provisions for nets to, you know, secure the ground or, or if you have to use the ones that aren't secure. The existing gym? Yeah, typically the- if you could the, repeat that conversation for the online audience. So yeah, the, the question conversation was whether or not there be inserts for volleyball nets in the gymnasium space. Uh, and they were questioning whether or not it was going to be uh, the inserts uh, or portable type nets. Uh, typically with a facility like this, we would put inserts uh, for the volleyball nets. So it's something that it's, it can be removed, but it's kind of permanently secured once we install it. We have another question coming from um, Zoom. It, it looks great. Are there bathrooms in each classroom in the pre-K, kinder, and first wing, or more importantly, sinks so kids can wash their hands? Yes, there are. There are, there are bath, uh, single-use bathrooms in all of those grades along with the sink. And it's another question from, from Zoom. I saw some orange added to the colorful gym walls. Is there any concern about us being the dolphins and adding orange to our teal? We don't want to look like the Miami Dolphins. I don't believe the Miami Dolphins have orange in their color, but I don't follow them, so I'm not too sure. <laughs> uh, and I, think, uh, but, well, I was going to say, in Texas, we're talking about a branding guidelines. Uh, if we're going to go through a formal process of proving these colors, right now they're just suggestions. Uh, the architect wanted an accent color, just to give you guys an idea, but uh, that's something we'll run through our principal and, of course, uh, back at the bond office. But anything to add, Jack? Uh, yes, again, we're the De Gaulier Dolphins, not the Miami <laughs> Dolphins, <laughs> with exclamation points. <laughs> um, they did comment that the yellow on the learning stairs looked great. Yeah, they're, they're the, and let me repeat the question. The question was regarding how the HVAC system is going to work at the new school, making sure that the classrooms are kept at a comfortable uh, temperature. And currently the design, what we're showing is uh, chillers, uh, kind of a central plant chiller that you see a lot of times, that then feeds what's called uh, VAVs for each classroom. 
what these boxes do is essentially they regulate the temperature for each flash. Uh, so you've got the kind of the loop of cold water and then you're regulating how much uh, you let air go through there to kind of regulate the temperature in the flash. So you should be able to get pretty good control uh, at the temperature uh, throughout the school. Our Facebook um, community wants to understand that the, that the architects understand that the foyer bleeds teal, all capital letters and exclamation points. So I have to make sure. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. 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 So there are several things, some are teachers, there are several things that are useful as students that we've installed and put it to know if we were able to take it out for them. Cool. Um, cool. Plus yeah. the sound system has brain parts in it. And we may, we may have some space for memorabilia. Yeah, there. So we can incorporate that into the new building as well, just in a small, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> in a small area. Uh, you know, just working with the architects, and we could probably tell you exactly where they are. And could you repeat the question? Yes, uh, there was questions before the building the demo. Will the students and staff need to take out any memorabilia or artwork or uh, just uh, keepsakes? By the door. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yes, uh, I only have the first right of south to the building. So usually before my contractor comes on board, we tell all the staff and the SD maintenance, you know, because they want to scap some parts as well. So you you will have that opportunity. Now I will give the principal some home, homework because right now is the time for us to know if there's stuff like the dolphin outside that you want to take to the new school so we can find a home for them. So by the time we're in construction, it's probably a little too late. We can still do it, but now's the time to find out. Like, I'm sure you want to move that dolphin. You got to find a spot for it. So let's let's think about that. Those things right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question coming again from Zoom. During the building, do you expect much disruption of the current school, and will they still get outside recess time every day? Yeah, that's more of an operational thing, but yeah, we're, we're going to have our uh, construction secure. You know, they have a perimeter fence around it, and uh, with, with uh, our safety director monitoring as well, I mean, our priority is safety, and to not disrupt the function of, of the school as much as possible. I'm sure there will be some situations with parking, but we'll go with that whole staging plan, and parking for contractors and staff with our principal once we get that contract on board. And also, a compliment. Uh, the question was, so each teacher could regulate their classroom temperature? Yes, I believe there are thermostats in, in all the classrooms, if I'm not mistaken. And the response to that is, if that's true, then amazing, all, all capital letters. It, it'll be limited. Yeah, we have some standards. It, it, I think you can swing it between two to four degrees or whatnot. So, I mean, we, we're still controlled by the central plant, just to troubleshoot and override. But, you know, there will be some local. Well. Also coming from the Zoom audience, um, during the previous meeting, the recess area was right outside of some of the classroom windows. Did they, was that moved around? Can we take a look at the screen for the table? Yeah. Um, you mean the, you mean the we still have recess? The playground the areas, the location of the play, the locate, they're asking about the location of the playground areas in relationship okay. to Sorry. the classrooms. No, the, the, yes, the, the north side of the school, the, the classrooms there are facing the playgrounds. But, but are they right outside the window or simply facing is the question? There's no, they're not on. right outside the windows, no. Right. And then um, somebody <coughs> else commented that we can't lose eek. Our mascot has got to come with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of storage is there uh, going to be in this design? Yeah. People like our, the art teacher, you know, they, they, they need a lot of space well, to store props and, and, and pots and, and also like the flats and the stuff like that, but also the desk Yeah, we have a Storage building around the back that I guess it will, you know, yeah. be, not be in the 
All right, all right, all right. We'll call this question coming up at our first meeting. We went back with the architect and we said, we got to increase the storage here. So I'm going to turn it over to him and see how he. No, we if you do repeat have. That, if you repeat those questions. So the, the question is whether or not there's going to be storage at the new school uh, and the amount of it, I suppose. So we do have a good bit amount of storage uh, kind of dispersed throughout the school. There's, there's storage for the auditorium, for its functions, storage for. Uh, the gymnasium functions as well as dedicated storage for the art classroom uh, right off of the art classroom uh, not to mention other storage places throughout book storage yeah book storage and, and whatnot. so uh, there's also i believe we ended up building in like three different workrooms one for admin and then separate floors that that'll have a lot of storage in them as well There's a 20 foot connex left behind after construction. That's going to be a new shed. Any other questions? No, but I, I'd like to ask a question. I see two of our little dolphins here. Can we find out what they think about their new school? <laughs> okay, you know, we have several people join us later. I was going to ask that as well. We have several people join us in the call late. If you don't mind just going back through the presentation. I'll start at the beginning. Uh, we'll start here. How's that? That's perfect. <laughs> so these are some of the uh, images that were presented uh, at the initial presentation. Uh, community meetings that were selected by the community as kind of inspiration images for the new school. And then from there, uh, I don't know if people recall this massing concept that was presented a long time ago, kind of the starting points for the design uh, that's, you know, we, we kind of build upon what we're showing at each community presentation. So you have the academic wing. And yeah, you have the academic wing and then the gymnasium cafeteria spaces. Uh, and then the connector piece between the two wings. So we've got a very kind of educational, what we like to think is almost more of a private space to the school and then the very public uh, area of the school. Looking at the site plan, uh, one of the things that we were really excited about the site plan is once we got to understand the amount of effort that went into putting into the community garden, we felt important that if we could save it, we should. So we are able to save the community garden in its current location uh, that you see highlighted uh, on the slide. Uh, and then you can see uh, the configuration of the school drop off lanes coming in to the property on Flare Drive and going back out to Flare Drive. Uh, that allows us to keep the, uh, the Flare address to the school, which was expressed to be an important desire by the community. And then on the back side, you can see play fields. Uh, playgrounds, which will have structures for both old, older kids and younger kids, basketball court, uh, all kind of in the fenced area uh, towards the back of the school on the north side of the school. Uh, these are kind of enlarged views of that site plan area. So you can see kind of the design of your community garden there. And now we're incorporating that into the processional, if you may, walking into uh, walking towards the school from Clare Drive. And then the Left over there, the courtyard entry, uh, as you get dropped off, you're kind of walking into this little courtyard that's surrounded by glass administration, cafeteria spaces, as you walk into the main doors, which are uh, where that star is located. It's a three-dimensional view of the computer model of the building. Uh, you can you can see the, the roofs on the uh, uh, education wing. Uh, kind of taking cues again from the old school with that butterfly design uh, for the roofs. And then kind of towards the top, we're seeing the gymatorium space with the accent color panels and the cafeteria volumes uh, associated with it. So on the first floor plan, as you walk in through the main entrance, you have the administration directly adjacent. So you'll have a secured entry to administration uh, to the school. And then as you go down the hallways, you're going into pre-K, kindergarten, uh, spaces, first grade. Uh, towards the east side of the school, you have the special ed classrooms that'll have an entrance close to them to the uh, bus drop-off lane on the site. 
And as you get closer to the cafeteria, uh, you've got uh, the art classroom, music classroom. And again, we're very excited that we were able to include an orchestra, dedicated orchestra classroom for the school, because uh, we understand that's a very important uh, part of the curriculum here. And then you're walking through the connector piece uh, into the cafeteria space, and then down the hallway to the gymatorium uh, stone shelter spaces. On the second floor, coming off of that kind of main entrance lobby, if you may, you'll, you're encountered by the uh, learning stair. So as soon as you go up that learning stair, uh, to the right, you'll have the media center uh, with the STEM classroom in there. And then as you go down the hallways, you have uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth grades uh, kind of flanking either side of the building. This is a view of the uh, walkway uh, towards the school from Clare Drive, as you see it at the background. A view looking east to, towards Flair from the community garden location. Uh, you're kind of towards the front, you see the gymnatorium space with the accent middle panels and, and the, the gold or teal. The orange <laughs> is just a little accent to make it really pop. So that's the idea. My friend said, I mean, we can, we can change colors easily. Uh, and then you see the, the classroom wing in the media center right here, um, kind of floating over the administration spaces. Uh, this is a view looking west at the, at the classroom wing and all the windows. Um, and then towards the background, you're seeing the media spaces. Uh, you see the little entrance that's kind of a uh, on the back, on the east side of the school, uh, of course, the sped classrooms that are at that lower uh, one story part of the uh, mass there. Uh, this is a view of the cafeteria space. Uh, we're creating an undulating ceiling to kind of mimic the, the waves because we are, we are dolphins. Uh, so we're underwater and you see the, the playful lights there, the idea looking like they're floating uh, on the water as well. And then this is a view of the learning stair right of administration, uh, really colorful kind of a, a gradient of colors that terminates in the, in the school teal that kind of wraps around the ceiling uh, with the accent lights. Uh, and the, again, taking them from the water motif, kind of the circle patterns that you see both on the floor and on the ceiling, uh, kind of thinking about raindrops um, in, the, in the space. And lastly, uh, this is a concept rendering of the gymatorium space. Uh, you have the acoustical uh, treatments of the walls that will mimic the colors on the outside, kind of bringing the two together, uh, retractable basketball goals. Uh, and as well, something that's not fully rendered here, but that back proscenium wall will actually have a brick treatment to mimic what's happening outside to kind of announce, uh, make, make it a stand out. Uh, more than it does a little bit right now. We do have a, a question coming from Facebook. <laughs> Is the orchestra music room soundproof? They will have enhanced walls, yes, but I won't say that they're soundproof. It's, it's extremely difficult to actually have something that's soundproof, but they will have acoustically enhanced walls. And we do, we do have a question uh, for uh, Mr. Carter, Principal Carter. If you would come forward with this one. Okay. okay. One of our audience members said they noticed that there were about four pre-K classrooms on the floor plan, and they were wondering if um, it was going to become a tuition-based pre-K facility, or has that been determined yet? That information hasn't, hasn't been determined yet uh, on our floor plans. This is just an anticipation of what our enrollment count could be, but that information is uh, discussed at this time. In, in the gymnatorium, what's the seating like? I didn't see any measures. Is that just 300, 400 chairs we've got to pull out at a time? <clears throat> yes, they, they, they will be, they will be movable chairs uh, that are supplied. Uh, so yeah, what? When you change functions, you'll, you'll need to move the chair. All those chairs out of the and actually, the furniture selection will be done during the FF&E process. 
and the principal will be able to determine what seating, what kind of furniture he wants for the entire building. So he, I'm <clears> sure that he will be, as all of our principals do, will keep that in mind and have the usability of each space when determining which furnishings go in each space. Yes, that is actually in the meeting. Can you repeat that question? The question was the uh, last community meeting there was talk about a maker space. Um, and yes, the, there is, we're planning for a maker space and it's part of the media center uh, volume, if you may. Yes, but a question. Is there a projected capacity for that theater? Um, and is there a partition? Since, uh, yeah, no, there's the repeat the question. <laughs> um, the question is whether there's a seating capacity for the gymnasium uh, in the if there's a partition uh, in the middle of the gymnasium space. Um, right now, we're not planning on a partition uh, for the gymnasium space, so it's just one big volume. And I'll need to get back with you guys on the seating capacity. Uh, so I'll let the principal know so we can disseminate the information. What kind of multimedia capacity capabilities will there be in the classrooms? Smart screen projectors, charging stations, they all have devices now. Yeah, I'm not sure district wise, but we've got, yeah, we're planning for digital displays on the classrooms. Okay, and they'll, and they'll have the charging stations as well. And what was the question? So, so okay, can yeah. you repeat the question? The, the question was what type of digital displays or digital devices would be in our standard classrooms and, and we'll have uh, display boards as well as charging stations in each of our classrooms. Uh, it's cows, yeah, cows, the portable uh, charging stations, yes. We have a question, for, another question coming from uh, Zoom. Is the maker space the same as the steam space previously mentioned on the charrette? Or are these two different spaces? No, they're they're the same space. Any other questions? Okay, so another question. Enough charging stations for all the one-to-one -one devices we now have? That was the question about the charging stations. It's one for each cow and yeah, we, we don't know the exact quantity. Uh, I have to get with technology and we'll, we'll follow up and give that information to the principal. Sounds like uh, we're not from there. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> With this, we're gonna allow the, the, the architect to proceed to the next stage. I heard take out the orange, you know, the lamb. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna look at storage again, and uh, keep know, eat, keep eat, keep the memorabilia. So we're gonna look at all that, and we're gonna allow these guys to proceed to the next stage. Again, I want to bid this over the summer, uh, take it to board September, October, and hopefully we're breaking ground back here sometime January, February. Time frame. So I'm excited to give you guys a brand new school in 2024. So again, uh, before we break out, yes, sir. I'd like to give our trustee any closing remarks. So I'll be, I'll be real brief. So thank you for joining and thank you everybody who's here in person and you know, you can say hang out and answer more questions if you have more questions. I'm just very excited about you know, working with CAPO, and then it's a great team that's going to be building this school. And uh, thank you again to the taxpayers and voters for passing the bond so that we can have this brand new school here in North Dallas. So thank you. Thanks. Final comment okay. online. This is so exciting. Thank you so much for listening to all of our very opinionated stakeholders. <laughs> we love it. Thank you. Guys. Love the input. And Jackie yeah. would remind you uh, follow us on uh, our website. Dallas Athlete Bond 2020. Uh, the, the website for, for this school is dallasisd.org forward slash the new Degordia.
And that's the project website where you'll be able to keep up to date. Again, that's dallasisd.org forward slash the new DeGoya. Yeah, and this presentation will be posted there. And any change of the announcements we have, we'll, we'll post up there about this timeline. Once they want to exactly bid and actually go into construction. So, again, in closing, see you all you guys at the groundbreaking. See you guys. <laughs>